Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and today we are going to be doing another Nation Guide in Fire and Maneuver. For today, we are taking a look at the Russian Empire, a quantity-based faction that is signified by being the Shock King. The Russian Empire is a nation that suffers heavily from most of its units having negative perks. The most pertinent one being disorganized, which almost every single unit in its roster is sporting. However, the Russian army does have some ways to offset this because they are able to make use of shock. Russia is undisputably the nation that can get the most shock in its standard army. It has pretty much any type of shock you could be looking for. Cheap militia shock as fodder, heavy elite shock with things like grenadiers, alongside a vast variety of shock cavalry that can pretty much fill any other role you need. It's a nation that is defined by getting right up into your face and beating you down with superior numbers and that copious amount of shock. Before we get into the unit guide, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like and subscribe because we are going to be covering every nation. If you haven't, you can check out the playlist that is going to have all the nation guides within it. But otherwise, let's go ahead and jump into the early period where we'll break down the nation and talk about specific units and some builds. Within the early period, the Russian Empire is well-rounded in its capabilities. However, it really does lack ranged power. The biggest reason for this is that its rifle is a limit of two. This means that only two units will have the extended range. Everything else, at best, can have a smoothbore musket. This makes Russia indisputably a nation that needs to get right up in front of their enemy to have any sort of effectiveness. However, this is actually a bit of a benefit to the Russian Empire because disorganized as a trait, the defining aspect of the sort of quantity Russia is that disorganized makes your units regain cohesion slower. However, if your units are next to an enemy unit, they don't regain cohesion at all, but neither does the enemy. And because you're saving money on your tr units with disorganized, the Russian army can afford to take one-for-one -one trades and will come out as the victor in such scenarios. That means that if Russia can get close, they can essentially turn disorganized from a downside into an upside, where the nation will suddenly turn pretty much not have any downsides on its units and in those cases the russian army essentially just becomes the same as any other nation with things like basic line infantry powerful heavy infantry and a variety of other units starting off though let's talk about probably one of the most important in the russian army and that is the krestyane a peasant militia, they are extremely weak in combat. With low cohesion, disorganized, and breakable, the Crestiane, at first glance, don't seem that powerful, being very weak and fragile, and pretty much dying after any serious combat starts. However, these negative perks and low cohesion drives the price down, and the addition of shock suddenly makes them one of the most foundational parts of a Russian army. And that is because you can just kind of spam them, and because of their low cost, you can throw them into a melee at any point, and they generally will get some value out of it. It is very easy for a Russian army to incorporate a horde of Crestiane into its build, and that is extremely powerful because of just the sheer amount of shock that offers. It is the defining aspect of the Crestiane, and really defines Russia as its swarmy shock aspect that it really focuses on. Crestiane don't last long in combat, that is true, but you don't really need them to. You get them in there, you do the initial charge with them, they deal good damage, and leave the enemy vulnerable to your more powerful units to finish them off. 
Then we also have the basic line infantry. It is a pretty vanilla infantry unit with good health and good cohesion. It has disorganized, making it not ideal for ranged combat, but instead these guys are best utilized as a meat shield. With good enough cohesion and health, they can take quite a beating before dying. And when you combine that with something like the Crestiane, it can create a powerful dynamic. The line infantry, either in open order or line, serves as the meat shield, giving the Crestiane a safe way to advance closer to the enemy, where they can then hopefully land a successful charge, leaving the enemy very vulnerable to either a follow-up charge from line infantry, more Crestiane, or a variety of other things. They help to bulk out your numbers and just give you stats on the field in order to maintain a superior quantitative advantage. We also have the Greek Volunteers. This is an early only unit and mainly is here as your rugged troop. They overall are essentially line infantry but have two less health in favor of rugged. This does make them cheaper although it does make them less durable, and the Rugged can have usefulness for flanking. However, they don't... Units like the Crestiane, and there's really just not a lot of synergy with Rugged. So these guys are mainly there to perform flanks on their own. They might be effective if you place rifles on them, making them sort of hard to deal with line infantry. Or you can just use them to flank or help to contest a point like a key forest or go across a annoyingly placed river. And they are, again, a little bit cheaper than line infantry, so they can fit a bit better into a budget if you're really running low on funds. But otherwise, they do have a bit of a limited use. You also have the Jaegers. The Jaegers are the light infantry of the Russian Empire. With low health and low cohesion and disorganized, they do retain skirmishing, making them flexible in open order. And that does help to offset somewhat their lower cohesion. The real reason you would take Jaegers, in all honesty, is that they are the cheapest infantry you can get. At 55 points each, they're cheaper than stuff like the Crestiani, and essentially serve as sort of the filler units. Two Christian, or two Jaegers is about the same price as a line infantry, so you can get extra numbers by utilizing the Jaegers, and in open order they can be great at guarding flanks or supporting units elsewhere. Then we get on to some of the bigger units within the Russian Empire, starting with the Grenadiers. The Grenadiers are a basic heavy infantry, having amazing health and cohesion, alongside the Shock Trait and Disorganized. They are essentially the supercharged version of the Crestiane. Unlike the Crestiane, who generally dies after a single charge, the Grenadiers should be expected to get into a melee, win that melee, and then perform a second charge at least. And their cost does mean you have to be more careful with them. They can't be thrown away like the Crestiane, but they are one of the most powerful shock units available to the Russian Empire. And in the early period, they are probably the single best melee unit you have access to. And that can make them very, very powerful. Then we move on to the essentially elite unit of the Russian Empire, the Grenadier Guards. This is another heavy infantry, also sporting disorganized, but it has range drill and melee drill. This makes the Grenadier Guards very, very expensive, but at the same time, the Grenadier Guards are your only range-drilled unit in the entire roster in the early period. On top of that, melee drill also does give them some utility in melee. Now, the first thought many will probably have is just slapping rifles on these guys and calling it a day, and that is true. These units can be very, very good sitting in open order or line blasting away. They're strong in melee if the fighting gets close. They're very, very flexible. However, it is also very feasible to leave smoothbores on them and essentially have them get in close and just blast away. 
Russia already naturally gets in close, and these guys can be quite flexible depending on your play style and strategy. They're overall good though, and I generally recommend getting at least one of them so you have some amount of range dam increased range damage. Moving on to the cavalry, you have a decent mix of cavalry, starting off with the Hussar. The real use of the Hussar is that they're cheap. That's really all they have going for them. They are fast and they are cheap. With Disorganized, they are not going to hold their own in any ranged combat, but they are about the same cost as something like a line infantry and can throw themselves into a melee relatively quickly. They can be a decent way to pin down a unit, but they are pretty overclassed by the next unit, and that is the Cossacks. The Cossacks is one of the more defining units of the Russian Empire. With low health and low cohesion, they don't last long in combat, but the combination of shock and rugged makes them pretty powerful. They're able to very easily wrap around the flanks of the enemy, and their shock makes them a must-answered threat. If the enemy ignores this and they get charged from the side or rear by a Cossacks, that can almost one-shot even something like a heavy infantry. So the Cossacks are very, very powerful, and they are about the same cost as a Hussar, pretty much the same cost as something like a line infantry, meaning it's very easy to slot these guys in, and they can be very, very powerful. Then we have the Ulans. The Ulans are sort of a different take on the Cossacks, and kind of serve as your mid-tier shock unit. They're more expensive than the Crestiani, but are a little cheaper than the Grenadiers. Their main purpose is that they have good health and good cohesion alongside shock and high movement speed. They're able to get on top of an enemy and deal overall good damage to them, and can be very effective as a shock unit. They last longer than something like the Cossacks, who is often a bit of a throwaway unit that gets one charge off. With Ulans, you can expect to usually get a second charge off or pull them back and have them remain on the battlefield after that initial impact. They overall can be effective, but their higher cost can make them somewhat difficult to put in compared to something like the Cossacks that can often be thrown in at the end of a build. Then we have the Dragoons. The Dragoons are a very interesting heavy cavalry. The biggest and most notable thing is that it is the only Russian unit in the entirety of its roster to have efficiency. Meaning if you want a unit that is able to move and change formation in a turn, the Dragoons are the only unit you can go to. And that innately makes Dragoons pretty valuable for the Russian Empire. It gives you a tactical flexibility that you don't find anywhere else. And even though Disorganized makes them less effective at shooting, they're not that expensive overall if you're looking for that maneuverability. They can quickly move to different parts of the front. They are able to then dismount and instantly start shooting. And they can even remount and get out of a dangerous situation. They're flexible and overall useful to always kind of have around. And then the final cavalry unit are the Cuirassiers. The Cuirassiers are a heavy cavalry with very high cohesion and health points, and then they sport melee drill and disorganized. The Cuirassiers are essentially the comparison to the Grenadiers. Their benefit is that the Crossiers have melee drill, making them much more durable than the Grenadiers in the grand scope of things. However, the big benefit is that Grenadiers have that shock on them, meaning that they deal more damage initially, and when you look at their costs, the Grenadiers have muskets and are still cheaper than the Crossiers, even if the Crossiers only have melee. So you do have a bit more utility when you commit to a Grenadier, but the Crossier is the most survivable infantry, or the most survivable melee unit available to the Russians. And they do pair quite well with stuff like the Crestiane. The Crestiane goes in and deals that initial damage, pinning the enemy unit, and then the Crossiers can follow up to stack more damage while taking minimal damage on their own. 
meaning they can get in there, deal good damage, and then hopefully get out of there without taking any real health damage. This can make them very, very useful. Then we move on to the artillery, and in all honesty, the artillery is kind of underwhelming for the Russians. The biggest draw is that it is somewhat cheap. The six-pound field artillery is the weakest one. It is the cheapest by a good margin. It's about the same. It's a similar price to something like a line infantry with a rifle, and it can provide a bit of fire support if you need it without breaking the bank. You also have a horse-drawn variant that is much more expensive but has the extra movement. The horse artillery, I think, is overall a slightly bit is definitely a better option. The extra movement is very, very useful for cumbersome artillery because it's able to position itself quicker and actually start firing. So it can be a useful addition. You can also go with the longer range 12 pound field artillery, who is more expensive than either of the previously mentioned options, but does have plus one range, meaning you can set it up more safely and it doesn't need to move nearly as often while still being able to contribute. And then we have the strongest one, which is actually the 18-pound Lacorn, a indirect howitzer that is armed with indirect fire and notably is unique in having one extra point of cohesion, making it a bit more durable than the other artillery options. It does still retain cumbersome. It notably also has anti-personnel if stuff gets close to it. But in general, this unit can be a very effective support tool, being able to suppress down enemies before your shock units go in, f being safely behind your hordes of infantry. It is actually a pretty solid artillery piece, and probably the best option within the Russian Empire in the early period. When it comes to building a early period Russian army, the fact that you can build such a large army gives you a lot of flexibility in it. These are just a couple ideas and suggestions you can use as builds or even just templates in order to utilize as you wish. This build is going to focus largely on having sheer numbers to sort of support the remainder of your army with. Utilizing double Grenadier of the Guards and a 18-pound Lacorn, you have a good amount of range capabilities, probably the, some of the best the Russians can really get. You then have a nice mix of line infantry and a Greek volunteer to bulk out your main infantry. And then you have plenty of shock with the three Crestiani and a Cossacks within your build. You can also easily go in a variety of other directions, leaning more with more Crestiane, finding room for another Greek volunteer, and messing around with a variety of other things. You can also go with a bit more of a quality build, and rely more so on spamming Russian heavy infantry to fill out your roster. A build like this is going to rely heavily on the fact that you just have so much health that the enemy is just not going to be able to counter you. The Grenadier Guard still serves as a range-drilled capable unit, but then with four heavy shock infantry, you have a lot of power once you get close. Line infantry bulk out your numbers, and the Dragoons provide some extra utility. You could also edit things and go a different way by leaning on the Greek volunteers to get a rifle on something. That's your own prerogative, but that is another way that Russia can play with a bit of a spammy, heavy infantry style. You can even mix and match, keeping multiple grenadiers, leaning more on Crestiane, and a variety of other tools. There's just simply a lot of flexibility, and you can adapt these builds as you want. And that's a power of the Russian army. You can kind of build it as you need it. If the map is going to be very reliant on ruggedness, it's easy to slot in the two Greek volunteers in order to fill that niche. You can bring artillery if that is what the map needs. You can bring a lot of cavalry if that is what you want. Adapt and play as you see fit. The main thing, though, is keep a lot of shock in your army. It is important that you retain a decent amount of shock. 
I would say at least three to four shock units should be in any Russian roster. Unless you are literally just going to spam Grenadier Guards and the remainder in line infantry, which can work admittedly, but I generally find that the use of some amount of shock helps dramatically within your roster. But now, let's go ahead and jump over to the late period where we're going to see Russia undergo a bit of a shift in terms of how it can play. The late period brings a variety of new tools to Russia and most notably gives it a lot more options when it wants to engage at range, which is important because melee is does become harder in the late period. But overall, the Russian Empire receives the new Finnish Guard rifles in place of Greek volunteers. Finnish Guard rifles are 4 health, 4 cohesion, with skirmishing, rugged, and range drill, making them actually very powerful at range. And they are notably the only unit in the entire Russian roster to not have disorganized, making them even more effective at range. These guys often can form the backbone of a lot of armies due to this fact that they are the best units at range, and that can keep them very, very useful. You also have a new unit in the Chevalier Guard. This is a powerful heavy cavalry with both shock and melee drill. Its high cost does make it expensive, even with just melee, but it does easily it is easily the heaviest and most powerful cavalry or even just melee unit within the Russian army if you're going to afford that high cost. Then we have two new artillery pieces, the Gorlov gun, essentially a Gatling gun, which is very useful as it is does not have cumbersome and can deal a ton of damage when you get up close and personal, which is something the Russians like to do. And you also have the model M1867 field artillery, a modern artillery piece. With breech loading and 5 range, this gun can shoot from across the map, suppressing enemies down and generally supporting your army. It is going to cost you an arm and a leg, being a very, very being the most expensive unit in the entire Russian roster. But it does have such a good range that it is very, very safe to utilize. The compositions in the late period for the Russian Empire are a lot more flexible than you would be able to do in the early period because you have way more options for range drill. The superior breech loaders alongside breech loaders and rifles that are actually not limited to two makes the nation just a lot more flexible in this regard. One basic option is to make use of the new tools to form a much more solid ranged capable army and then back it up with a good, solid, old series of units that just help to fill out your roster. The double Finnish Jaegers alongside the modern artillery supports your ranged and forms your ranged core. The line infantry and Crestiane are the good old combination. Then you also have a Cossacks for some quick moving shock. And then some Jaegers to help round out the cost because they're cheap. This is a pretty basic build, uh, but does use but does have some a lot more capability at range than Russia would otherwise normally have. Another build can also be similar to the early period where you utilize a variety of various heavy infantry to carry fights for you. Something like this gives you two Grenadier Guards with rifled breech loaders, making them very powerful in ranged combat. Two Grenadiers as heavy shock units, three line infantry, a Gorlov gun in order to offer up close and personal suppression or just murder capabilities, and then some Crestiane to round it out with some numbers. You'll notice overall that these armies are generally a bit smaller than that than in the early period, and that is because you are paying a lot for something like the rifled breech loader, but you could also save on costs and go for a lot cheaper of a build 
utilizing cheaper units and relying on, again, kind of the spammy nature to do stuff like carry a fight for you. A build like this could be very effective, utilizing the Grenadier Guards getting right up in the enemy's face in order to maximize damage, while you having things like the Crestiane for shock, you have Finnish Guards as extra range drill, you have a Dragoons, and a variety of other tools in order to help support your army. Generally, as in the early period, I recommend making use of both Crestiane and something with range drill. That often forms a very good foundation for it. And then after that, you can adapt your builds as you need or as you see fit. And with that, that is the Russian Empire in general. It is a very interesting nation. It is actually a pretty straightforward, aggressive nation. You're going to pretty much walk up to your enemy, send your shock units in, and hopefully that'll help you carry the day. You don't have the ability to stay at range because of disorganized, but if you can get close, the Russian army can very quickly snowball because it can just trade so well with pretty much any nation in the game. The only exception is if you're going against another swarmy faction like the Tokugawa Shogunate that is also really good in melee. At which point Russia can kind of become a ranged nation, relying on its high quality units in order to win out. It's an interesting mix, a quality quantity nation in a sort of, if you squint at it. And that makes the, I overall really do enjoy the Russian Empire. If you enjoyed today's video and guide, make sure to, again, check out the rest of the videos that are containing guides for every other nation in Fire and Maneuver, and also make sure to, again, like and subscribe, as you will see more Fire and Maneuver content coming out, including any remaining guides that are not out at the time of this video. But otherwise, that is all I have for you today. If you, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.